In today's episode of Stories Telling Stories, we take a look at Mrs. Hazeltine's submarine story from the oft-omitted 80s classic, Throw Mama from the Train. Owen Lift is a man-child of sorts who has never allowed the chance to grow up and escape the grasp of his overbearing mother. Finding an outlet in a community college class taught by Billy Crystal's Professor Donner, we discover a colorful cast of characters all vying for the opportunity to become better storytellers. Within this class, we discover an opinionated older woman known only as Mrs. Hazeltine, who crafts a wartime submarine story without such key details as the name of certain instruments or the captain's name, just a fellow seaman named Dave, the use of questionable similes, and a seemingly abrupt and anticlimactic ending. Where did all these seamen come from? From what enemy do they make such a daring escape? And who the hell is Dave? It's time to find out, as Mrs. Hazeltine's submarine story comes to life, 30 years after the original, with the world's first fully fleshed out telling. Sit back, relax, and enjoy. This is Stories Telling Stories. The captain of the submarine awoke from a restless night in a cold sweat. Something was wrong. Putting on his captain's hat, he made his way to the command area. Sensing that the captain was sensing something amiss, Dave crossed to the captain and greeted him with a sailor's salute. "'Good morning, sir,' said Dave. "'It's a beautiful day or evening, isn't it?' "'It would be, Dave,' said the captain. "'But something in my bones doesn't feel right today.' It was a quiet night underwater, observed Dave. None of the enemy alarms went off even once. I wish all nights were like this. The captain pondered on this news, but still couldn't shake the feeling of dread that had so far haunted his day. Looking around at all that he commanded, he saw seamen hard at work. They were pushing buttons, reading charts, and running this ship like a well-oiled machine. I think it's time to surface, said the captain. Are you sure, said Dave? The enemy could be anywhere, especially up there. Check the telescope thing to see if they're outside, replied the captain. If they aren't there, let's surface. Okay, I will, said Dave. And he did. With the coast clear, a man pushed a button and the submarine rose to the surface, breaching the cold ocean water like a fat whale. The captain turned the wheelie thing on the inside of the outside door and climbed the ladder onto the surface of the submarine. He was followed by Dave and two other men. The fresh air is nice, said Dave. Yeah, said the captain. The fresh air is nice, but don't let your guard down for a minute. The enemy is as tricky as those placemats at the Apollo Diner. The men drew their weapons just in case, and Dave stuck close by the captain. The ocean is like a mirror with waves, contemplated the captain, Now that I know it's sunrise, I can enjoy how pretty it is. But are you sure it's sunrise? asked Dave. It could be sunset. Sunrise, sunset, waxed the captain, like the days of our lives. Look out! yelled the man. The enemy is here! yelled the other man. Captain! Get behind me, yelled Dave, and the captain did. My God, said the captain, how did those bastards find us? But before he could finish his thought, the enemy opened fire on the men. A rain of bullets from all sorts of enemy guns flew at the men. Some of the bullets missed and hit the water making it look like it was indeed raining. 
Some of the bullets caused water to splash up onto the deck, mixing with the blood of the two men that was now running down onto the submarine. No! yelled the captain. Not my men! You need to get inside, urged Dave, or you will soon meet the same fate. Okay, said the captain. He gave the men the sailor's salute and descended back into the submarine with Dave. The men were left behind for a burial at sea. I can't believe the enemy was here, said Dave, and I can't believe they shot the men like that, mowed down in their prime like cuts of beef on the killing floor. That's why they are the enemy and we are fighting them said the captain. I'll never forget those brave men laying down their lives while we escaped. Their guts oozed nice, remarked Dave, like a melted malted. Easy now, Dave, said the captain. They were still men, even up to the very end. Suddenly, the enemy alarm was going off, telling the seamen that the enemy was still there and was preparing to attack again. Dave and the captain rushed down to the control area. They're preparing another attack, exclaimed Dave. What should we do? We need to think fast and put an end to this madness. Once again, the captain looked out over all he commanded. Some men were pushing buttons, some were reading charts, and some were waiting for orders. The captain knew what he had to do. Dive! Dive! said the captain through the thing, and the man that makes it dive pressed a button or something, and it dove, and the enemy was foiled again. Looks like we foiled them again, said Dave. Yeah, said the captain. We foiled those bastards, didn't we, Dave? Yeah, said Dave. The end. This has been Stories Telling Stories, a podcast by Eric R. Hill, produced in association with Seeing Red Productions. And until next time, stay whimsical.